guys, and as usual, welcome to another kit review. So, um, as you can see, we're having a look at a kit from Tamiya. It is Tamiya's SAS Land Rover Pink Panther. Uh, kit number for this one is 35076, and it came out in 1976. So, this one I've only just recently picked up. It cost me around $20 Australian, I think $22 Australian. I have seen them going for somewhere closer to up to $50 Australian, which is uh, kind of a ridiculous price, but that's what some people are asking for these. Now, these are not a current issue. They are still available. They do turn up now and then on a fairly regular basis. So when I saw this one for 22, I thought, you know what? I haven't built one of these since the 70s. So uh, let's get this one. And let's have a look. So as you can see, it's a Land Rover in pink. And yes, they were pink. This is actually a um, Land Rover 109 Series 2A um, chassis, body, that was specifically painted pink for the SAS units operating in the Middle East, in uh, Oman, Yemen, and places like that. Um, originally, when they came out, because they were painted in a factory, the wheel wells and the underneath were still in standard British Army green. So next batch out, they were all painted pink inside and out because having green wheel wells and what have you really made these things stand out. So let's have a look at the rest of the box. On the side, as you can see, it's in Japanese telling you about the Land Rover it does have a driver figure on the other side three more of Tamiya's early releases which is the Centurion the SAS SAS I should say not SES SAS World War II Jeep and Chieftain let's have a look and see what we got so instructions as you can see English and Japanese. This shows you that it is a later issue, even though it hasn't been tagged as being coming out on any specific thing, but they are still making this because it does have the new tips in it. And yes, it does come in pink plastic, which kind of makes your job a little bit easier, but not so much because you would really still want to paint this all right in a second we will have a look at the instructions and take it from there let's have a look at the instructions so on the front you've got in english because you do have english and japanese instructions this is the um, history of the sas land rover where it was used and its history going back to World War II. An actual photo of an SAS Pink Panther Land Rover. And because these are older instructions, you do actually have sprue layouts. Modern Tamiya kits don't have sprue layouts on their instructions. And first off, we start with putting the chassis together. So this is a pretty easy construction as are most Tamiya kits. Your running gear is going on, your exhaust pipe, your wheels are going together. Now, it does show you Tamiya paints here. It doesn't give you actual um, Tamiya colors, but it does tell you what color they should be, like black, etc. So you've got your springs and wheels going on the chassis. Seats are going in. That's the front of the Land Rover going together. That's your um, accessories and headlights, etc., going on. This is your figure, who is a driver figure, of course. Overleaf, you've got the back of the Land Rover going together. As you can see, it does have smoke discharges. Um, you do get some basic accessories tripod etc but sand channels but nothing spectacular so um, 
in reality, these uh, Land Rovers were actually full of everything needed on the mission and uh, everything needed to enable the troops to actually spend a lot more time out in the field without actually having to go back to base. So food, fuel, you name it, they carried it. Overleaf is your armaments. These are your machine guns. And then it just shows you putting the machine gun in to the back. Various accessories going on. And this is a really good bit. I'll actually bring this one up closer. It explains what all these fittings on the Land Rover are. All right? These are your uh, smoke dischargers. There's your Vickers machine gun, sand compass, etc. etc. So this is a really nice detail that Tammy's put on the older instructions. Now there are no decals in this kit. You'll notice in the cover photo it shows this number plate here. That is actually painted. That piece there you'll actually have to paint to get those numbers. All right, so that's the instructions. In a second, we'll actually have a look at the sprues themselves. Okay, so there are three sprues in the kit. It doesn't have vinyl tires, it has plastic tires. So let's have a look at this first sprue, which is your chassis your driver figure and various fittings for the front of the um, Land Rover. Well, actually, that's only part is driver figure. That's just the bottom part. So really nice grill detail. Put a uh, black wash on that after you've finished your main painting and that should come up really nicely. These are your instruments. Top of the bonnet, of course. These are your differentials, steering wheel, and springs. So basic leaf springs on this old Land Rover. So as you can see, that's your chassis. So one piece makes it very solid. That's your um, engine bay, so to speak. Exhaust pipe, jerry can, so I'll give you some shots of details from this sprue anyway. So that's the first sprue. Next sprue out is this one, which is the back of the Land Rover, the sand channels, tarp, and various fittings. So let's turn this around. That's the back, by the way. These are your sand channels that go on either side. There's your tarp cover. But um, yes, I would probably fill this with all sorts of accessories, boxes, fuel, tins, you name it. So everything was painted pink. So that's wooden floorboards, but the whole vehicle was painted pink, including uh, seats, you name it, steering wheel, absolutely everything was painted pink. That is, sorry, that went out of focus. That is your number plate for the front of the Land Rover. And why did they paint them pink? Well, in the desert, especially in places like Oman, um, in the evening, and most especially in the morning, when the sun's just coming up, the sands are actually pink, or very pink. And that's the times when the SAS would be operating or moving to and from their base camps or outer camps in the evenings, in the morning early, but most of their operations, of course, would be at night. So 
painting them pink made them very difficult to spot. So I'll give you some shots of this sprue and the details. And the last brew is this one. So you've got the rest of the figure. These are your wheels. These are your smoke discharges and your machine gun, etc. Let's have a closer look. So yes, the wheels themselves. Um, there are shots of the uh, troop operating in Oman on the uh, internet. So you can see how they've painted the wheels and the paint's kind of fallen off because it's been used. But it is basically pink. Let's turn this around so you can have a look at the driver figure. And I'll give you close-ups of him anyway. So not too bad. I do like the detail of the smoke discharges, the tripod, the machine gun. Really nice detail. These are the handles for the machine gun and various other things like spades, etc. And that's it, guys. That is Tamiya's SAS Land Rover, Pink Panther. As I said, it came out in 1976. It does seem to be a issue by Tamiya every now and then because it does have uprated, uh, like I said, the safety instructions, etc. But overall, this kit itself has never been reissued or upgraded and yes it cost me $22 for this one they're always available they're not in short supply so a really nice kit to pick up and uh, as I said that brings us to the end of this video so hope you got something from it thank you for watching thank you for your likes and your subscriptions and your comments they are always welcome and as usual guys until next time Take it easy, stay safe, and I will see you later.